In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my markdown documents look like this. Notice that I have different folds in this document. Each fold level has different colors. I'm going to show you how to set that up and the plugin that I use for this. First, let me give you an overview of what this plugin does. Notice that there is an icon on the left side of each one of the headings. I just put numbers to easily see the level of a heading. So I know that this has a heading level two, level three. If I come down here, I'm going to see here that there are some level four headings. They have different colors. Next, something pretty useful if we scroll up up to the table of contents, you will see that the indentation symbols change. Notice that I have like a dot here for the indentation level two, the symbol is different. And for level three is like a diamond, as you can see here. This other level is a diamond as well, but it's not filled. So this helps with the visuals. I think it looks pretty nice. If you don't like these symbols that are used, you can change them. It's highly customizable, so you can basically change everything. You will also notice here in the table of contents that it detected that this is a link and it adds this little icon. Notice what my cursor is at right now. Now I'm just going to move down. You're going to see that little link icon. So that's something that the plugin adds as well. Let's keep scrolling down on this file. This is just a regular bullet point. Let's see what else we have here. Nothing here inside. Just another empty heading. Code blocks. That is something that looks different with this plugin. Let me expand this section. You're going to see first here that we have a call out. If you're used to using Obsidian, you will know what this is. But if you're not, it's just like a little note that calls your attention. Notice the color and the little symbol here are different. I'm going to show you all the different options for callouts later. But if you notice down here, we have code blocks. Notice that it doesn't reach all the way, but it just goes as far as the text goes. Notice the symbol here. It's added automatically. The only thing that I did is just type this bash and it renders that symbol for Lua. The same thing here. You just type Lua and it added this Lua symbol automatically. Same thing if we go down here to Python. This is all I typed and it shows you the symbol as well. Each symbol has a different color that comes out of the box. You don't need to configure anything. And notice that all these symbols are basically concealed until you hover one of the lines in which you have some symbols. You won't be able to see them. Like in this case, I can see the three backticks. And if I scroll down here to the bottom of this code block, I can see the other three backticks. But if you're not on that specific line, everything is concealed. Same happens with the headings. If I hover over this heading, I will be able to see the four pound symbols that define this heading. But if I move away from here, they will be gone. And I think that's pretty nice. That's the out of the box configuration. I didn't modify that at all. If we scroll down here, I have some headings inside H5 heading. Notice the colors. And I have here inside this some H6 headings. Notice the colors that I have there as well. Let's scroll down to the section images and NeoVim, image that NVim to view images. Notice that it detects that I have some images here and it automatically added this small icon. I didn't do that. The plugin does it out of the box as well. If I hover over this image, it's going to show it. Notice the format of this image is WebP. This is not something that the plugin does. I configure Kitty and NeoVim so that I can view and paste images. I can paste them in different formats, WebP, AVIF, PNG, JPG, whatever you decide to go with. If you want to know how to set that up, you can watch the video on the top right corner. I have some other images down here if I keep scrolling down, but let's move to the next section. I'm just going to fold everything to level two. I have a key map for that. Leader M as in markdown, F as in fold, and then the letter K. Notice that everything is folded to level two. And I go to this section here, callouts. If you want to know how I fold my markdown headings like this, if for example, I press leader M F L is going to show me all the level two and level three headings. If I do leader M F K only level two headings. If you want to know how I did this, I also have a video. I released it a few days ago in which I go over specifically folds. You will also be able to find that video on the top right corner. Let's go to this callout section. How do you type them in? So in my case, there are snippets that were configured by default. I just need to type the name of the callout. As you can see here, note, tip, important warning or caution. There are other ones. The list is here. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me scroll down here and I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to type warning. Notice that a snippet shows up. I'm going to press control Y, which is how I accept snippets. Just going to delete this and I'm going to type it here on the right hand side. This is a warning and notice that the callout shows up like that. I did and configure these snippets. They just worked out of the box. Something that you need to keep in mind as well is that I use the lazy vim distribution, which is the one that is shown here in my browser. And this distribution already comes out of the box with a lot of stuff configured, including snippets. If you use something else, not sure, but you may have to configure snippets. So that's one way of typing the callouts in using the snippets. Notice that I also use prettier, so it will automatically format my callouts. So if I don't want it to do that, I just add this line prettier ignore right at the top of a callout. That allows me to set up this callout 
for example, and it spans across multiple lines. Notice that there's a line in between, but it's because of this, because I'm ignoring Prettier. If you don't use Prettier, you don't need to do this. But this is only if you want to have the callout in multiple lines. If you want to have the callout on a single line, you don't have to worry about this Prettier Ignore. I have some examples here. Notice that I'm not adding this Prettier Ignore. And I have the different callouts here, the different examples. So you can see them all. The ones below are the ones that work with snippets. Note, look at the symbol and the color. I modified the default colors, by the way. These are not the colors that you're going to get. I'll show you how to modify those as well. So this is a note, tip, important, warning, caution, caution. The ones below do not work with snippets, but notice the icon that they have and their color to abstract, to do, success, question, failure, danger, bug, example, and quote. I also changed the color of the quote because I think the default was white. Let me show you the configuration for this plugin. I'm gonna jump to my dot files latest directory. Here is the plugin render markdown.lua. Let me go to the repo for this plugin real quick. Here it is. If you like it, make sure to star it. I think it's a pretty useful plugin and makes your markdown documents look really beautiful. If you scroll down here, you'll be able to find the readme. There's some examples here of other things. Notice how tables look. I don't use tables too much, but they look nicer with this plugin. Notice also that you get checkboxes. You can render LaTeX as well. You just need to install a few additional dependencies, I think. I don't do LaTeX anymore, so I'm not quite sure, but I think I read something here in the in the readme. This is the callouts that we were looking at and um, here are the requirements for LaTeX and uh, dependencies installation. I'll show you how to install it if you want to use my config. And here's all the documentation setup, heading configuration. If you want to customize stuff, you can go over the documentation. And you're basically going to find everything there. It's pretty well documented. Again, if you like this plugin, make sure to start the GitHub repo. Now let me show you how I configured this plugin. Just made a few modifications and uh, basically the colors. I'm not using using the default colors for the headings. I'm just using my own colors that I load from a different file. Let me give you a quick example on how this happens. I'm going to press hyper CN on my keyboard. I get this color scheme picker. going to choose this dark puccine.sh theme. Gonna hit enter here and you'll notice that several things change. Sketchy bar on the top changed. My Tmux paint changed. Also the color scheme that NeoVim has applied changed, but we cannot see that because I have to quit NeoVim. I'm outside NeoVim here. My Starship prompt changed as well. Going to reopen NeoVim. You're gonna see the new colors apply right now. I'm just gonna restore the session. Notice that I'm using different colors now. If I go back to my markdown document, the one that we were working on, let me just quit this NeoVim session. I'm going to reopen it, restore the file, and notice that the headings are different. I'm just going to fold the level three headings, leader MFL. And notice now that the colors are using a cat puccine variant. That's what I'm doing with this line here. I'm just loading the colors from a different file. If you want to know how I modify the colors everywhere on my system, I just released a video in which I explain in detail how to do all this. It's a little bit advanced because I cover a lot of bash scripts, but it doesn't matter if you're using Mac OS or if you're using Linux, since it's only bash scripts, you can do that as well. The video is going to be in the description and I'm also going to leave it on the top right corner. But if you're not using this color scheme, selector that I created, just make sure you comment this line. And then after you comment that line, make sure you hard code some colors here. Here's an example. Copy this here and paste it here, replacing all these colors. So just specify a color for each one of the different headings, whatever colors you want to use. And you don't need to modify anything else because then down here, I just reference these variables. Color FG is referenced here. Color 1VG is referenced here. So you would only need to replace them here. And if we keep scrolling down, you will see that I modified the symbols for the headings. These are the symbols that show on the left hand side. You can use different symbols if you want. It's up to you. And if we keep scrolling down here, I don't have anything else. Where is this file? It's in my dot files latest repo. This is the path for the file. Neovim, Neobin, Lua plugins, render markdown that Lua. I'm going to leave my dot files in the video description, but let me go to the repo so you can have a look real quick. Here it is. If you like it, make sure to start it. I'm going to search for the file here. Just going to go here, FE, render, markdown. And here is that file that we were looking at. You will notice an important note at the top of the file. When you hover over markdown headings, this plugin goes away. So your colors are going to be different when you hover over them. The only way that I was able to make this work is by loading the colors after the config.lazy in the init.lua file. Let me go to that file real quick. Going to init.lua. Notice that I have here this config big highlights. Let me open this file. Highlights.lua. 
So notice where this file is, config highlights that Lua. So if you want to add that as well, make sure you add it there. I'm loading my colors here as well, but if you're not doing this, just remember to comment this line and also hard code the colors here, the same way that we did it on the other file. And then you can grab the code that I have down here. If you want to modify the colors that the callouts use, I did that in another file, which is basically my color scheme file. Let me bring that up. It's this eldritch.lua file. This file also uses my color scheme selector. Notice that I'm loading the colors here at the top. So I'm using variables to set up all the colors. But if you want to modify the colors for the callouts, let me search here for callouts. I don't remember how they show up. No, it doesn't show up as callouts. Let me scroll down here and find this. Yep, I think these are the ones that you need to modify. Diagnostic, info, hint, warn, okay, error, and markdown quotes. Let me make sure about that. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to go back to GitHub. Let's search here for this diagnostic info. And yep, these are the ones. Notice info related callouts, callouts, callouts. So this is why I modified those back here. If you're not loading my colors or if you're not using my color scheme selector, just make sure that you replace this with a hex color. Okay, so I covered most of the features that I use about this plugin. If you use a different plugin for Markdown or if you have other Markdown tips, please let me know down in the comments. Oh, and really important, don't forget to use 